Hey guys, I just want to step in and give you a quick crash course about something that will help keep us on pace with uh, this material. Um, and it, it's, it's really not a particularly difficult uh, set of concepts here. So I think I can get, get away with just a quick little uh, mini video about this. Basically what I'm going to explain to you in just the next few minutes is if I take any matrix at all, doesn't have to be a square matrix. If I take any matrix, let's say it's M by N, I can associate three different subspaces to that matrix. Okay, there are sort of three subspaces that we think of that we associate with any matrix. One of them we've already talked about earlier in uh, this material, which is the null space of the matrix. And we showed that it was in fact a subspace of our n, n is the number of columns in the matrix. So just to remind you again, it's just the set of vectors in our n that the matrix, when you apply the matrix to them, you get zero. So ax equals zero. This is like the key equation. Okay, so we've seen this before. And the way you find the null space of a matrix is you just take the matrix and you augment it, whoops, so let's say I take this matrix here, this is a 4 by 3 matrix, okay? What you do is you take the matrix and you augment the matrix with a column of zeros. So we're just going to add a column of zeros here, okay? It's a very simple idea. We've done this before, this is nothing new, I'm just kind of reviewing it with you here. Okay, we take that matrix and we row reduce it <coughs> using our EROs. Okay, so the first row would stay the same. Let's take negative 2 times the first row and add it to the second row. So we'll get 0, negative 3, negative 6. I'm going to leave the third row alone for a moment. And then let's take the negative of the first row and add it to the second row. Okay, and what you're going to notice now is basically the second, third, and fourth rows are all just multiples of one another. So what I can do is more or less just zero them out. So I'm going to just put 0, 1, 2 here. The other two rows are going to zero out. Okay? So you get a couple of pivots. And I'll just remind you, we have a free variable here. Let's say that we associate these variables as A, B, and C with these three columns. So what we would conclude here is that C is a free variable. I'll call it T. Then when I back substitute with the second row, b was, would end up equaling negative 2t. And then if I plug that in, I can solve for a. a is going to end up being, looks like it's also negative 2t. So just by back substitution into that uh, first equation. So that is, that is what you're going to get. Okay. So what that says then is that the null space of a Here's our conclusion now, based on these values. The null space of A is just negative 2t, negative 2t, t, such that t is a real number. Okay? So there's the null space of A. Now, what I want to do is find a basis for that. Remember, we just talked about um, the idea of a basis. In other words, I need a spanning set that is linearly independent. The way we get our spanning set is we simply bust out the variables. In this case, we just have to bust out a t. So after we bust out the t, the only numbers that are left are these three numbers right here. Okay? So this vector, negative 2, negative 2, 1, spans the null space. And obviously, since it's only one vector, it has to be li. Right? There's no, you can't make any linear dependencies when you only have one vector, right? I can't get this vector to cancel out in a, com in a linear combination because there's no other vectors to cancel it out with, right? So this is actually a basis right here, okay? And the other thing that we would, that we would be able to say at this point is that the dimension of the null space of this matrix, the dimension of it, remember the dimension is just the number of vectors in a basis for the space. So we only have one vector here, so the dimension of the null space is 1, right? 
This actually brings up an interesting point. The dimension of the null space is 1. Let's backtrack and think about why that is. The reason that the dimension of the null space is 1 is that there was only one free variable to bust out, right? So this dimension, it's not a coincidence that the value of the dimension of the null space is just the number of free variables. Let me just remind you one more time the uh, row echelon form of A sharp. I shouldn't have erased it already. Basically, it was just this matrix here. <coughs> okay. So we had two rows of zeros at the bottom. So look at these, look at the columns. There's three columns here, right? N is equal to three. Okay. Two of them have pivots, and one of them does not. So the, the one unpivoted column gave rise to this one-dimensional null space. Right. By the way, there is a word for the dimension of the null space of a matrix, and you want to know this word. It's an easy word to, to keep track of. It's called the nullity of the matrix. It's just the number of free variables in this row-reduced version of A sharp. So it's the dimension of the null space. It's equal to 1. But here now is a fact that I, that I want to uh, drive home to you guys. This is a very, very important but very easy uh, theorem. And it's called the Rank Nullity Theorem. This is, this is one of the sections in this chapter. Um, it's actually section 4.9 in the book. Okay, here's what it basically says. The rank of a matrix plus the nullity of a matrix is equal to n, which is the number of columns of the matrix. What a simple statement, right? It's actually very easy to understand this, this theorem. The rank, remember, is the number of pivots. It's the number of pivots in the matrix, right? So here, in the row echelon form of this matrix, we have two pivots. The nullity is the number of free variables. But that's just, so the number of free variables, that's just another way of saying it's the number of unpivoted columns. So I'm going to call it the number of non-pivots. Okay, the number of free variables, the number of non-pivots, that gives rise to the dimension of the null space, which is the nullity. Well, this makes total sense, right? There are n columns in total. Each one of the, in this case, three. Each one of those columns either has a pivot or doesn't have a pivot. So if I have two pivots and one non-pivot, for this matrix over here, the formula would just read 2 plus 1 equals 3. It's a very simple theorem, okay? Sometimes you can just look at a matrix, for example, and you can tell what the rank of it is, or you can tell what the nullity of it is. If you can do that, this theorem will allow you to determine the other number, right? So let's say I have a matrix where n is equal to 7, and I can just tell by looking at the matrix that there are three pivots, the rank is 3. Well, then I immediately know, without even calculating the null space of the matrix, that the nullity would be 4. So 7 columns, 3 of them are pivoted, just means that 4 of them don't have pivots. So a lot of times you can, by inspection, figure out uh, what one or the other of these numbers is in order to make it add up to n. Okay? So this is the null space of a matrix. It's a subspace of Rn, and it is simply equal to the vectors that a times x equals 0. It's the x's that make that true. And we've, we've solved null space problems many times before. There's nothing too weird about it. Now let me give you I said there are three subspaces here related to a matrix. Let me quickly tell you about the other two. Okay? The second one is called the row space of A. Okay? What is that? <laughs> the row space of A, as it turns out, is just the span of the set of row vectors of A. So you just sort of uh, look at the matrix and you treat its rows as vectors. So we could go back to this, sorry, we could go back to the same example again. 
you know, A is uh, 1, 2, 6, 2, 1, 6, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2. There's our matrix. The row space of A is just the span of these four rows, right? So for this example, it would be the span of the vectors 1, 2, 6, 2, 1, 6, 0, 1, 2, and 1, 2, 0. Because it's the span of something, I just want to remind you, anytime you take the span of anything, you always get a subspace. Okay, so that's why we're calling it a row space here. It's got to be a subspace. You're forming the span of something that always gives you a subspace. In this case, it is, it is a subspace, once again, of Rn. Okay, and that's because there are n columns, which means that each row has n slots in it, right? Each row is going to have n slots. So it's a subspace of Rn. Now, when you look at this, you might think that since there are four rows in this matrix, you might think that this row space is four-dimensional. But please be careful. That's actually not true. Because I can do those EROs that I showed you before. I can do those EROs and I can reduce this matrix down to this row echelon form. And now, as you can see, there are only two non-zero rows. The issue really is that these four row vectors, they had linear dependencies in them. Now that's not surprising because look, the rows are each, each row has three slots. It means each row vector here is in uh, R3, right? So you would be taking 1, 2, 6, 2, 1, 6, 0, 1, 2, and 1, 2, 0. We have four vectors in R3, right? Each one of these rows is a vector in R3. Well, that's too many vectors. As you remember, if I have four vectors in a three-dimensional space, they must be LD. But here's the magic part, is that when you do these EROs, what those EROs do is they sort of flush out the dependencies for you. They kind of, uh, they, they, they expose them, right? These two rows of zeros that are on the bottom of this matrix, the reason that they are there is that when you did EROs, you sort of massaged out whatever linear dependencies the original four vectors had, leaving you only with these two, okay? So when you want to know the dimension of the row space of a matrix, what you have to do is you can't just count how many rows you have. You have to row reduce the matrix first and then count how many non-zero rows are left. So it's just the rank of the matrix. It's just the rank. That's the number of pivots, right? So in this example, the dimension of this row space would be 2. All right? So, and in fact, if I ask you for a basis, a basis for the row space, all you have to do, guys, you don't want to list these four row vectors because these four rows are not a basis, right? They fail to be Li. These are not linearly independent right here. However, these two rows, well, pretty obvious that they are not multiples of each other, right? They are definitely linearly independent. So basically you take, you just take the the set of non-zero, the non-zero rows of the row echelon form of the matrix. Okay? That's a basis for the row space. Alright, good enough. I hope that makes sense. It's very it's nice because if I ask you for the null space and the row space, you can kind of do them at the same time. Because in both cases you need to row reduce the matrix A. Um, it's just that you're looking for different things. When you do the null space, of course, you have to set up free variables and do the back substitution and all of that and then bust out those variables. Here with the row space, you just row reduce the matrix and then take the rows that you have there that are non-zero and that's going to be your basis. Okay? Great. One last one for you. The last one is very similar. It is just the column space of A which we write as call space of A. So I need to give myself just a little bit more room here. Okay, the column space of a matrix, very simple. 
This is just simply the span of the set of column vectors of the matrix A. It's the column vectors. You just take the span of those. Now in this case, the column vectors, if you think about a column here, the number of entries in a column of this matrix is actually, since it's an M by N matrix, the number of entries down here is actually M. So the column space is a subspace of Rm, so that is a difference between the other two spaces. The column space is a subspace of Rm. It is a subspace because it's just the span of something, okay? And all I really have to do to explain what this is, is I'm just going to tell you, you do the same thing that you just did for the null space and the row space, which is you row reduce your matrix. So just one last time, I need to write this down. 1, 2, 6, 2, 1, 6, uh, 0, 1, 2, 1, 0, 2, right? Here's what you do to get the column space, to get a basis and dimension for the column space. You once again row reduce the matrix, okay? So for all three of these subspaces, you do the same thing, which is nice because you only have to do it once, right? So you row reduce the matrix. Now, what you do this time, remember when we did the row space, you just took the span of the two rows that are left after you've row reduced the matrix. For the column space, you might think, well, I just take the two columns that we ended up with here. It's the span of these columns. Turns out, though, that when you're doing row operations on a matrix, you can actually screw up the columns, right? You actually change what the span of those columns is. So what you have to do is just a slight little trick. You take the pivoted columns that you got right here, but you go back to the original matrix and take the corresponding columns, so in this case the first two columns, you take those columns as your basis. So in this example, the basis would be, so the basis for the column space, it's just the span of the two columns that we have here. So, and by the way, when you're doing the column space, it makes sense to draw them as columns. When you're doing the row space, it makes sense to draw them as rows. So for, the, for this matrix, the, the row space, sorry, I've got to go back to the row space for just a second. The row space of this matrix would have a basis which would be, you could write this as rows, 1, 2, 6, and 2, uh, and 0, 1, 2, right? So, um, you would tend to, you tend to write row space bases as row vectors, column space bases as column vectors. Makes sense, right? Because here you're talking about columns. But the dimension of the column space is still just equal to the number of pivots, which is 2. So that is the same as what we said, so the the, uh, the dimension, the dimension, hopefully you can see this okay, the dimension of the call space of a matrix is just the rank of the matrix. It's just the number of pivots, okay? So just a little twist with the column space. You have to take the pivoted columns from the row echelon form and go back to the corresponding columns from the original matrix, okay? Whereas when we did the row space, we just took the rows as we found them in the row echelon form, okay? So it's very easy to, to do this. You just need to kind of remember the Rn versus the Rm, right? Uh, and the dimensions of these things. We have the nullity and we have the rank. These two both have... So even though the row space and column space are subspaces of different vector spaces, Rn for the row space and Rm for the column space, they both have the same dimension, which is just the rank of the matrix, the number of pivots in the row echelon form. Okay? Uh, and then the only other thing to just, as a recap for the lecture, you want to know this rank nullity theorem. Okay? That's the other thing I went over here. The rank plus the nullity is equal to the number of columns. Okay? This is two sections, 4.8 and 4.9. It's all you really need to, to know. Uh, I'm going to let you try to use this video to help you do some of the problems in those two sections. They will mostly go pretty quickly, but of course I'm going to be happy to help you during my office hours over the weekend and also uh, in class. Um, 
before the homework is due on Monday, I'll be happy to take some questions. Okay? Hope this makes sense, and I will see you guys soon.